All right. Well, greetings, everybody. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, I wondered why I wasn't seeing too many comments come up, and I figured it was because I was uh, putting people to sleep. But it turns out that when I clicked go live, it didn't go live. So uh, to those who've been hanging around or, or those who are just joining us, welcome to Workbench Wednesday. I'm going to rewind and start uh, from where I started. Fortunately, I've still got a nice little bit of work here to do tonight. So uh, you haven't missed anything. Uh, and we'll just pretend like the last 20 minutes never happened. Um, it's it's uh, It's been one of those, those days, I suppose. All right, but welcome to Workbench Wednesday. Tonight's topic is making static grass. And this is a topic that's actually been requested a few times over the years. And my dog has come in to join me to make everything else uh, uh, complete the, the, the circle here, uh, high peaches. Uh, the, uh, this is a topic that has come up quite a few times uh, in the past as a request for, uh, for making scenery and for doing things, uh, how you apply static grass. It's a relatively new method of doing scenery as uh, scenery methods go in the hobby, uh, but it's um, one that's uh, very, very easy to do, and any, any beginner can pick this up um, with just a few simple tools that you can either purchase at any hobby shop or in some cases build it yourself uh, and then uh, apply to your scenery. And it, it gives a tremendously nice effect um, versus uh, just trying to do something with uh, dyed sawdust or even the, the ground foam that was in, in vogue um, uh, for many, many decades before this. So the subject for our, our project tonight is a small display board uh, that is uh, being used for one of our uh, display, one of our HO model kits. And we're building up some simple mock-ups uh, for an upcoming HO catalog that you'll be seeing here and you can hear more about in the not too distant future, um, as well as to take to shows and display and so forth. So if you were lucky enough to come and visit us in Springfield a week or two ago, you probably saw some of these. Um, and uh, we're getting a few more, have a few more to go before the, the whole run of buildings is finished. Uh, tonight's building is our uh, courthouse or town hall. Um, and so the base for this is about roughly one foot square. It's not quite perfectly square, but roughly one foot by one foot. Um, and what we're using is a piece of one inch insulation foam. Let me switch things around here so you can see the workbench camera more than, than me. Uh, and and there's, there's, there's Peaches down there. Say hi, Peaches. Beaches will probably be saying hi a lot through this show. Um, one inch pink insulation foam uh, that you can get at any hardware store uh, makes a great base for scenery no matter what scale scale you're working on. Um, I painted the top of it a mixture of uh, earth tones, uh, raw sienna, raw umber, uh, whatever you have lying around. Not really critical as you can see from the areas I, I, I grasped when I thought we were uh, live. Um, you're not going to see much of that. The main purpose is you just don't want to see bright pink uh, showing through the grass. That will will show up. Uh, but a light coat of, uh, of any color of paint goes on real fast and will hide all of that. The dog has found packing material to chew on. So I apologize for the background noise. Um, once you've got your base painted and prepped, mark the location of your building. You can see the outline here. Here's the kit. The kit's not quite finished yet, but we're getting there. Uh, you want to finish your building to the point necessary to mark off your scenery. Um, in this case, really, that's just the foundation. Once you have the foundation laid out, uh, you're, you're good to go. The, uh, the building does not sit square on my base. You may be able to tell here in the photo, and that's by design. Uh, when you lay out your, um, your train garden or your layout or your diorama, think about viewing angles. And in real life, even when you're in a city and things are on a grid, uh, we don't often stand at right angles to things uh, to view the world. And, and in most places, the world is not laid out in right angles. It, it has all sorts of contours and, and things to it. So the more you can change those angles on the layout, uh, you increase the number of sides of the building that people are going to be able to look at at any one point. Uh, and it just creates visual interest and helps lead your eye through a scene. Uh, so purposely on, on most of these little dioramas that we've been building, I've been putting them at a slight angle to help help do that. Uh, of course, in our catalog, you'll see these, they'll, they'll have a nice 360 degree rotation and it, it won't even matter, but um, for a static display, it's it's a nice thing to do. Right? 
once you've got that laid out, I did put on a couple of little sidewalks and uh, pavement sections here where I wanted those. Um, they help uh, frame in where the grass is going to be. They also put a little, give me a little few mounting locations for the building itself. Uh, so that as I remove the building to do the scenery and finish the, the kit itself, um, I'll have an, a nice place to fit it and don't have to worry too much about where it's going um, when it goes back. So if you, if you have a temporary layout, this is another great thing to do uh, as you can take things on and off very easily. Stop eating the kits, peaches. Okay. Um, now we're going to get into actually doing the, the grass itself. Um, could I zoom out a bit, please? On, I'm not sure if you want me to. I can't with this camera. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of zoom control. But let me hold this back up so you can see see the base again. Um, here you see the one-inch foam uh, painted on the top, cheap acrylic paints. Where we have some pavement just to lock things in place. We've covered that in past Workbench Wednesdays, so feel free to uh, scroll back through and find some things. Uh, right before Christmas, we did a nice one on making the pavement on another diorama. And then over here, you can see some of the graphs that I, I did earlier tonight. Uh, and so you can sort of tell where the building is going to going to sit on that. Um, the first phase of this uh, I did with a, a mixed bag of, of grass uh, that was still in the applicator. Uh, and now the rest we'll do with a more manicured, uh, shorter grass to give it a more manicured lawn look because this is the town courthouse. So uh, we want we want this grass to look a little bit nicer than, let's say, a, a cow pasture. Um, you can buy the grass block itself uh, at any hobby shop. There are a variety of companies that make this. The one I'm using tonight is from Woodland Scenics, and it's roughly a one or two millimeter uh, length. It's one of their shorter grass lengths. Depending on the scale that you're in uh, will depend a lot on uh, how big your, how tall your grass fibers you want to use will be. Also the type of grass that you're modeling. Again, if you're modeling an open field, uh, then you might want to go with some longer grasses. If you're modeling a, a, a suburban scene or a well-kept manicured lawn, go short. Uh, you can get this in uh, anywhere from one to two millimeters up to, a, I think, at least seven or eight, if not 10, 12 me, uh, millimeter lengths, um, depending on what you want to do and pretty much any color you can imagine. Uh, and you don't have to stick to one. You can mix and match even at the same time as you're applying things, as we'll see here in a little bit. The other thing you're going to need is some glue, something to hold it down with. Uh, tonight, I am using good old-fashioned, uh, straight, full-strength Elmer's White Glue. Um, I recommend this. This will work just fine. Do not be tempted with the slightly cheaper, uh, but more watered-down school glue version of glue. Uh, this will work for some scenery materials, but it's not as, not as strong and not as durable. Uh, so especially for a, a module like this that's going to be carried around a lot, I want, I want the strength. Um, but sometimes if you're doing something where you're going to water down the glue, like I, uh, when we do ballast, we've, we've shown ballasting in the past and we thin the glue 50-50 anyway, save yourself a few cents and, and start with some of the water already in there. Um, other glues you can use, uh, Aileen's Tacky Glue is a hobby glue you can find at uh, Michael's or um, any of the, the main craft stores. Uh, and some of the scenery companies like Scenic Express, Woodland Scenics, they make a special flocking uh, or static grass glue as well. Uh, I've used that in the past and it works just fine. Uh, but especially for the really short stuff that we're doing tonight, the, the white glue is easy to get and will work great. Uh, the main tool that you'll need is the static grass applicator. Uh, and what this does is it creates a static charge uh, between the, the, uh, the shaker and the, the base of your layout. Uh, and that helps these little tiny fibers stand up on end instead of laying flat on the scene. They stand up like little blades of, gra of grass. Uh, it's a very convincing and very pleasing effect. These are made by a number of manufacturers. Again, this one's from Woodland Scenics, um, but most of the big scenery manufacturers do have these available. They're gonna run you anywhere between maybe 85 and $150, depending on the brand. They all work pretty much the same way and give you very similar results. If you're willing to do a little bit of uh, MacGyvering of, on your own, you can build yourself your own static grass applicator out of a electric bug zapper and a kitchen strainer uh, and a little bit of wire. Um, I've done that too, and it works great. Uh, it works just as well as the commercial ones, honestly, uh, for about uh, 8 to $10 worth of parts um, that you can find uh, at, a, at a small hardware store or a kitchen store. Uh, 
the big advantage that I have found to using the commercial one over the homemade uh, one is it's much, much more difficult to turn yourself into an unwanted house fly and zap yourself with the, uh, the commercial one than it is with those homemade jobs, depending on how you do it. Uh, so for tonight, we're going to use this uh, because it's what most of you may go out and find in the market. Um, and uh, again, you get similar results. So if you want to build something for yourself, by all means, give it a try. And then the last thing we'll be needing when we're all said and done after we get the grass applied is we'll have a, have a shop back on hand. Uh, as well as an old pair of nylons uh, to help collect the and reuse this this grass. As you can see in my box here, uh, it does make a little bit of a mess, and we're going to want to try and um, we're going to want to try and reuse some of that. If you're doing this on a layout and don't have the luxury of putting your layout in a box, not right now, peaches. Um, you can lay out newspaper, lay out plastic uh, sheeting, whatever you'd like to do to help control the mess. These things are kind of like really small versions of an artificial Christmas tree. So if you've ever put one of those up in your house, you know that you're cleaning up for a month and then you're cleaning up needles for the rest of your life. Uh, these can be kind of the same way. Peaches, not right now. Peaches is not a fan of Workbench Wednesday. All right. Let's go ahead and get started here. I've done the first couple of areas. Um, we're going to go ahead and start here on the other side of where the uh, where the courthouse will sit. We'll start by spreading our glue. When you're when you're doing these applications, you can work in an area as big as you'd like. I tend to not work in a huge area at any one point in time, just so I can control the results and and, and stay focused. But find the balance between um, control and and driving yourself nuts, stopping every five minutes to to redo things. Uh, also, there's only so much grass that the hopper will hold too, and this will pretty much do a full charge here to cover this area. Now, in this particular case, I'm not too concerned about going over the edges. Uh, where I have buildings and so forth, because I'm going to be coming back through and planting some bushes and shrubs uh, and the like um, to help complete this scene before everything's all said and done. And since I've got some extra glue here on my finger, we'll just wipe it off here in this area. All right. We're going to take one end of the uh, machine, be, there'll be a wire coming off of it. Uh, in this case, it has a little alligator clip that's very nice. Uh, you can attach this to a, uh, a nail. Um, I use an old uh, X-Acto blade that's no longer sharp enough for uh, for modeling, uh, for building kits, uh, but it makes a great little stabber here for, for doing this kind of scenery. And we're just going to put that near our glue, someplace uh, close to help send the charge. Uh, without being too much in the way. And then the fun part, turn on the machine, hover it about a half inch or so over the, the area you want to apply the grass, and just shake it. You'll see it goes on quickly and fairly heavily. Turn this a little bit here. I'll try and get this closer to the camera once I get the grass on so you can see better. I did try a new camera location to see if tonight see if that would help. All right, I have thoroughly covered this area. Take that out. All right. The next step is we want to uh, vacuum this. And the vacuum is going to do two things. It's going to obviously clean up a lot of the excess mess. But it's also going to help those fibers stand on end the way we really want them to. Uh, now, so I don't lose all of the the fibers. You, this is this is optional, but I'm frugal, which is a nice way of saying I'm really cheap. So I'm going to use an old nylon and put that over the edge of the the hose, and this will allow the air to come through, but not all the the grass fibers. Uh, if you are borrowing one of these nylons from your significant other. Um, Make sure you ask first because trust me, they are not going to want this back when you're done with it. 
All right, and here we go. allow that grass to go right back into the hopper and we'll be able to reuse it okay after the first round you can see it's still a little bit spotty uh, not quite as uniform and nice as the other side here that's not a problem uh, we can go back over this all again a second time and we can do it right away. Now, if you wanted to vary the colors in your grass, this would be a great time to change out the colors or the lengths so you can vary up the texture or the overall composition a little bit more. Uh, if you just want a solid color like we're going for here, uh, then you just load up and, and go again. I'm ahead of myself here. Let's put the... Uh, Put the point a little bit closer here. Get that out of the way. Once again, we'll do a little light cleaning. All right, and there you see now the results after a second application, much thicker. That's a good looking, that's a good looking bit of grass right there for the front of our courthouse. Uh, the last area I have to do is just this little area in front uh, where I sort of wiped the glue off my fingers earlier. This gives you a good example of if you wanted to do a more uh, sporadic area, you can do this over, over dirt or other landscaping materials, uh, mix and match with different, different textures, different materials, to get uh, a less manicured look, which is usually what I go for. But again, in this case, the subject matter really sort of calls for a, a nicer, uh, more finished uh, scene. Uh, it would be, be proper for our town. Uh, so we're gonna put a little bit of glue just around the edges here. Fill in the, the gaps where we didn't have, have grass already. That's one little area here I'm not happy with too. And we'll give this one more, one more shot, and we'll call this project up. Yes, please. Oh, dog. And we annoy peaches with the vacuum cleaner one more time. Well, she's eating my shoes. Mm -hmm. 
Still not quite as heavy as I'd like it. So we'll give it a second coat too. This would be a great area to put a uh, flag or a statue or a fountain if you're building one of these courthouse displays for yourself. But we're keeping it simple for the kit because we just want to show the main building and not confuse people with what might not be included. Still not perfect, not even by a long shot, but I will work on that a little bit more after we go off the air tonight because I think you get the idea and I want you to don't want to bore everybody with multiple applications of the same process here. Right. Last but not least, let's just finish the job by putting the building back in place. There we go. That gives you a good idea of, of how easy that is to complete. Now, of course, the scene isn't finished yet. Uh, neither is the building. We still have a lot of details to add, uh, both on the structure and around it. This clearly could, could cause out for some little trees or bushes uh, and some nice landscaping. Uh, and then the last thing that I'll do is paint the uh, edges of the base black so that it looks nice when it's sitting on the shelf at the next train show. But I hope that gives everybody a, an idea of just how quick and easy it is to do this kind of scenery and the, uh, the results that you'll get. Uh, it does not take very long, as you can see, uh, even if you forget to record the first half of it uh, <laughs> uh, or you're fighting off a dog who has now decided to eat your new shoes. Um, with that, I think we'll wrap up for tonight. Um, hope that you all had a chance to catch the catalog show on Train World TV last night. Uh, C1 catalog orders are just about to that point where uh, it's time to uh, you know, start getting in your, your pre-orders to guarantee delivery, and then we'll be putting in our orders uh, at the beginning of March with the factories, and you should see a production schedule probably mid-March uh, for those looking for, uh, for things to uh, from, from C1. Uh, as I mentioned, with the HO kit here, there'll be some more HO announcements coming in the very near future. Uh, probably within the next uh, four to six weeks or so as well. So stay tuned for, for more fun things there. Um, looking over the questions we've got here. Um, let's see here. Will the charge work when applied directly onto a homo soap base? Yes. Uh, you can use this on pretty much any material, any base that you'd like. Uh, you put, put the glue on and uh, sink your nail in or your, your knife in to create that negative uh, polarity or positive polarity on the on the base and then the opposite polarity is in the, the charger and you'll get that stick. Homo soap would work just fine. Uh, you can do this directly on plywood if you like. You'll just want, instead of using that little exacto knife, drive a little finishing nail in there and use that alligator clip on the applicator and it'll stick right in and you'll be good to go. Uh, so that's a great question. Yeah, you don't have to use the, um, uh, uh, don't have to use the, the, the styrofoam base that I, I used. Does the static grass stay on uh, on end or does it eventually fall over flat? Um, I have not seen it fall over flat in some of the displays that we've done over the past several years uh, using this method. It tends to hold its charge pretty well. Uh, I suspect that if you really did run into a problem, taking the uh, you can either wave the wand back over it and that will help stand things back up or take the vacuum to it and that can also help pull things up a little bit as well. Uh, the vacuum really does make a big difference in getting things up the way you want them uh, on, when, when you apply it, and then it stays pretty nicely for a really long time. Uh, I've not had anyone tell me that it eventually uh, wilts. Let's see, a couple other good questions here. 
My friend Chuck has one. Uh, how well does the static grass go over the ground foam? Uh, it actually works pretty well. You can use this on more than just uh, the, the scenery. Uh, I've seen people use the static grass uh, over, for example, uh, tree branches. Uh, go out and get some twigs or, or make an armature out of wire. Uh, and then using the same technique, uh, flock this on to create a, the effect of pine needles. And it's very convincing. Uh, you can mix this in with, uh, with a variety of, uh, of ground foams and other things to create uh, different textures uh, and different effects. Uh, you can also, if you get really creative with it, you can uh, make tufts of this using the longer, uh, using the longer styles of, of sizes of the grass. You can make your own weeds. Um, easy way to do that, uh, take some parchment paper uh, or wax paper, lay it over a cookie tray, uh, and then take your white glue and make dots and squiggles and any, any size shape that you want for your patches to be in. Clip the alligator clip onto the cookie tray. You've got a nice metal base so it transmits the charge. Shake it on, vacuum up the excess, and you've got a whole bunch, a whole sheet full of little static grass tufts that you can then peel off and plant as weeds anywhere on your layout. If you want to make them flowering weeds, just put a little glue on the other end, dip them in some uh, yellow or white or red uh, ground tuff, and you get uh, nice flowers. Uh, so a lot of... Uh, a lot of easy things and, and great things you can do with this. You can make your own scenic details, uh, much less ex more uh, expensive than going out and buying some of those little tufts in sheets or in small packs uh, at the hobby shop. But it's all the same material and it's all basically made the same way. Uh, so definitely once you, you, you've tried this and, and tried the, the basics, uh, experiment with it and have some fun. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I had some longer tufts in here from the, uh, the last couple of dioramas that I've been doing. Uh, and so just to work that out, the area behind the courthouse, the maintenance crews don't go back there as much. Uh, so if I hold that up here to the camera, let me switch back over to the camera and make that larger again. Um, you can probably see the difference. Um, right in here. You'll see we go from a, a longer, uh, more unkept turf to the more manicured lawn. Uh, and that effect is, is it's subtle, but it's, it, uh, it jumps out at you really nicely uh, in the model. And little things like that uh, just add to the scene. Uh, so the more you mixed it up and, and do things, the more uh, interesting it becomes. The longer the grass strands are, the more you see that uh, vertical nature of them as well. Uh, so it's a, a lot of fun to do these things and I uh, highly recommend you give it a try. We'll be back with some more Workbench Wednesday programs here in another, another couple of weeks as we go through this busy season and into the spring uh, and look forward to sharing more great tips and techniques with you as we go. So thanks a lot, everyone, for joining in, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Take care.